Thank you very much. I'm Omar Saifouni from uh, Trois, EPF uh, uh, school, uh, engineering school uh, from Trois, Flanfesh. Uh, so uh, the aim of this presentation is to see how uh, 3D printing materials uh, oxy with oxytic patterns can uh, improve the toughness or otherwise improve the energy dissipation of the materials. Uh, for intro as introduction, in introduction, sorry, uh, we start. We know all of. Uh, we, know, we we know that 3D printing technology today uh, allow us to print uh, wonderful uh, specimens. And if we compare it to the traditional manufacturing, we can find uh, get a lot of advantages. However, we uh, we will not get this uh, the the same performances. And uh, almost of times we have uh, less or lower performances, especially mechanical performances. So uh, a field, uh, these performances, uh, mechanical special performances are not the same because of a lot of, lot of aspects, especially when I talk about anisotropy of, uh, of the material, uh, because the behavior become uh, on 3D painting technology depending on the uh, patterns of deposit of filaments. So uh, from here, so the design, are effective, are def, uh, uh, design of for additive manufacturing is new, uh, defame is new uh, area of research which uh, the, the aim is to optimize the conception by minimizing costs and maximizing quality, especially the uh, performance, mechanical performance of materials. So uh, the defame, uh, one of the principal defame is ad to make or to create advanced structured materials in addit addi additive manufacturing, sorry. Uh, and uh, we can see here three kinds of uh, uh, advanced structured materials or functional materials like uh, latest materials on the A uh, picture and the B uh, uh, oxytic materials and C topologi uh, topological optimizations. We will focus on this study on the oxytic materials. When we talk about oxytic materials, we talk about a negative coefficient of Poisson ratio. So, Poisson ratio. So, uh, we're talking about uh, Poisson ratio, which is the report between transversal uh, strain and longitudinal strain. Uh, and uh, when we talk about it, so conventional behavior of materials, when we pull in one direction, the second direction is shrinkage, uh, uh, is, is, it became smaller. But oxytic materials, when we pull on the first, on the longitudinal direction, the second direction bec became uh, bigger. And that's what we give, gave us uh, a negative uh, Poisson ratio. So this kind of materials with this structure, so have, uh, have exhibits a lot of positive or a lot of good characteristics, uh, especially when we compress them or when they uh, behave uh, uh, or shock behaviors. As well. So uh, oxidative patter patterns in 3D printing. So here we have comparison between two patterns, honeycomb patterns, uh, uh, which behave like conventional materials. And we have oxidative materials. Uh, the, like here, well, like this, uh, uh, sh this, uh, the pa these patterns, which uh, behave uh, with negative uh, uh, ratio Poisson, uh, Poisson ratio. Uh, a lot of proposition in literature we can find, and I give some examples of these shapes for uh, ox oxytic materials that was uh, used in 3D printing. Uh, the motivation for our study is to, uh, try, uh, tr to try to see if the oxytic patterns can improve so, uh, or the energy or the, the factor toughness uh, applied on 3D printed metallics specimens. So the, ma the specimens was uh, uh, extruded by uh, of uh, 17 40 ash stainless, stainless steel. So for this purpose, so we will choose uh, the SNB uh, beam, 
for Stissiman, sorry, uh, which was proposed uh, by Keish uh, Keishiro and Itoshi, uh, this one. And after that, the motivation is that if I have a normal beam, I, s I know that when I apply a force or three, uh, three point bending beam uh, test, so if I apply a force here, I will get uh, uh, tensional uh, forces here, which, gi which make, which uh, uh, give or uh, make, uh, uh, what's the name, uh, uh, tension here. And after that, and, in, uh, in w and when we have a notch here, so this notch, uh, this tension will uh, apply, or this notch, uh, the, uh, this tension will uh, help to reduce or to delay the propagation uh, or slow down the crack pro propagation. So about experimental protocols, so three, uh, four types of uh, uh, specimens are uh, proposed. So first one is solid specimen. Second is honeycomb spe specimen. Uh, third one uh, is uh, uh, oxytic materials with zero degree, that means uh, zero degree compared to the notch and 19 degree uh, oxytic cells with 19 degree. Uh, the dimensions was chosen to get uh, in, in order to get the same surfaces for the three uh, specimens, honeycomb, oxytic at uh, zero degree and 90 degree. So we have the same uh, surfaces, equivalent uh, almost surfaces, that means equivalent average of weight. Uh, of course, solid is not, uh, we will not give, we, will, uh, we can't uh, find same, it will not be uh, the same uh, surface, of course. Uh, after that, uh, the material, uh, the, the specimens were printed by Mark Forget uh, machine and uh, 3D printer uh, by using the technology fused filament fabrication 3D printing, and this is the result. Uh, the extrusion temperature was uh, 230 uh, degree, nozzle diameter uh, 250 uh, micrometers. Uh, and after that, the machine tests for 3D, uh, three points bending tests was in front uh, 4484. And the speed, uh, loading speed was 0.5 millimeter per, per minute. About results, the first cures so, uh, are load versus displacement. So what we can see here, that we have uh, a linear, uh, a linear uh, parts or linear behavior of all curves. So that means that we have almost uh, uh, elastic linear behavior for all uh, our curves and it finish with the brittle fracture at the end or failure at the end. Uh, this failure can be uh, because of the failure of material and, and also, and it can be also uh, because of uh, the uh, the dislocation between cells. Uh, we, if we compare the rigidities or the, uh, yes, the stiffness or rigidities of samples, so we can uh, see that we have uh, almost the same uh, rigidities, which, are, which is defined by the slope of these curves between oxytic materials uh, at zero and 90 degree, and compare it to the honeycomb, uh, honeycomb uh, have uh, the honeycomb uh, specimens have uh, bigger or uh, have more rigidity. After that, we compare so uh, loads, resistance, and uh, deflection, and we see here that solid specimen is the most resistant, but the latest here, the latest, uh, the, the least ductile materials uh, specimen, which is normal for it's resistant because it's a full material. And uh, uh, we see that the oxytic, the oxytic materials, uh, specimens, sorry, are the most ductile materials, but the less resistant. So to, uh, to get conclu conclusion from that, so we need to deal with energy assessments. So here we calculate the failure energy, which is uh, the area under this curve uh, 
uh, by integral calculated by the integral uh, and uh, about when we see the results we see that the oxytic at zero degree has a highest uh, energy absorption until failure uh, uh, compare it to the solid which, which has the lowest uh, energy consumption. And this is really interesting uh, results that c and uh, compared oxytic zero degree to oxytic 90 degree, we can see that we have big difference between both of them. Also, we can see we uh, to uh, take into account the weight of uh, materials. So we uh, propose a dimensionless, dimensionless performance index we take, which takes into account the weight of the samples and also uh, uh, which is, uh, w w and we take as reference the uh, solid index. So solid is uh, one and compare it to the solid, the honeycomb, the solid uh, specimen, the honeycomb oxytic at 19 degree and, ni and oxytic zero degree. So we see that the oxytic at zero degree is the best or the highest performance compared to the 90 degree and honeycomb. Uh, and uh, we can see also that the report is high, uh, is really important and really interesting. We have 3.45 times compared to the solid specimen and for the oxytic at 90 degree, uh, which is almost equal to the honeycomb uh, index uh, performance and the, which is more than two times compared to the solid uh, specimen. We done also, uh, we, di we did also a uh, finite element method, but it was only preliminary finite element analysis uh, by an elastic, it was an elastic part. So we apply first, first, uh, first of all uh, on uh, a CNB uh, no, uh, specimen. Uh, it was done on Katia. Uh, finite elements module and here we uh, try to uh, calibrate here we calibrate the material with the, uh, the results of the solid specimen and after that we get uh, young modules and for, uh, for equivalent uh, beam and after that by calibrating m m model so we uh, draw uh, we uh, put uh, we, we did the uh, simulation of the three uh, uh, the three uh, other specimens uh, and uh, wha what we get from this simulation uh, the uh, the dashed point uh, the, 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 uh, the yes the dashed lines are the simulations what we can get from this simulation that's, that, that's the order is okay but the rigidities are not so close to the experimental uh, curves and this can be because of the impact, maybe, because, because of uh, the effect of dislocation between cells. And these things was so, uh, s uh, seen on the, uh, on the specimens after failure. So uh, as conclusion, so oxytic materials zero degree has the better energy performance index than 19 and honeycomb structures, which was equivalent. Uh, and we can see here when I talk about dislocations, you see here, so we found some dislocations after the tests and this can be one of parameters to take into account. So uh, as perspective, so is to take into account this dislocations in FC parts and also making uh, elastoplastic finite element simulation with damage model to take into account also uh, these uh, dislocations and make a parametric study because this was only a study for uh, param uh, fixed uh, parameters. Thank you for your attention.